Hey everyone, my name is Tegan, welcome back to Tandy Writes, where today we're going to be wrapping up my reading in August. I think this might actually be my most impressive reading month for the year so far, or at least my second most. I think I usually start strong in January, then it goes like down by one book each month. So I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten books, and then I start, I say I started the 11th, I read like 20 pages, and then accepted that, you know, it's the end of the month, I can like give myself a break. So you might be able to tell on here that I started off the month very strong, and this is because I was on holiday and I spent a lot of time sitting on trains or sitting in hotel rooms, and I was like, well, I suddenly have the time to just sit here and read. I was also very much neglecting writing my book this month, because I thought, I'm so close to the end, it can just wait. And then I just... I, it is finished now, but I dragged it out. Okay, let's start with some stats. Okay, so as I said, I st read ten books. For the first time ever, they were predominantly, like, physical books, which was five of them, 50%. And at the start of the year, I made a video saying that I'm going to set myself a goal to read specific books off my physical TBR this year because there's a lot on these shelves that I haven't read and they've been sitting there for years. And I read five books. None of them were on the list of books that I wanted to read this year, but one of them I have had for at least over a year, maybe two or three years now. So, okay, I'm making progress in the backlog a little bit. Then I had one advanced copy, which was Night Strider. I had two audiobook rereads, and then two library borrows. As usual, my genres are predominantly mysterious, dark, adventurous, tense, with a bit of emotional reflective thrown in there. I can't think for the life of me which one would have been reflective. Then seven out of these ten books were young adult, five were fantasy, four had LGBT representation, four were horror because I'm still on like my big horror urge, so maybe I need to do some kind of like horror or at least horror adjacent spooky recommendations for spooky season video. Maybe I will, who knows. Then romance, historical, thriller, mystery and contemporary are all down on the lower end of my genres. And usually I don't include like the pie chart for formats, but I did this month because I said, yeah, 50% print, I'm finally, you know, remembering that I can read also so much faster in physical books. Like, I think Storygraph thinks it takes an average of me six days to read a book. I think with ebooks, sometimes it can take a week or two just because I'd, I get distracted so easily. But with some of these physical books, I read them in two days, so it averages out. So yeah, 30% digital and 20% audio as well. For a total of 2,851 pages and 16.65 hours. This month I finally thought my average rating was going to be over 4 stars because I had a lot of 4 and 4.5 star reads. I think 7. Yeah, 7 in total. And then I had like a 3 and a 2 star near the end that kind of dropped that rating a little bit. So I've ended up with the exact same star rating as last month, I believe. But I think I enjoyed this month a lot more. Okay, that is all for the stats, and let's start talking about some books. The first book I finished reading literally on the first of the month was The Woods All Black by Lee Mandela because it's this lovely, I think it's like a 150 page novella. It is about a trans nurse, a trans male nurse, who is going to this like small remote town to try and like give vaccinations in 1920s Appalachia, is what it is. And then the town are immediately resistant to this, this woman who, this person they perceive to be a woman who doesn't act how they want, and they are very wary to outsiders, I think openly hostile to outsiders. But it describes it in this little description in here as equal parts historical horror, trans romance and blood-soaked revenge, all set in 1920s Appalachia. And I think that is very true. And I really did enjoy this book. It took me... I think I picked it up for the horror influence. It took a while for that to sit in. It was kind of like drop-fed of like, oh, there's a spooky sound outside, there's a mysterious shadow. And it didn't take... Well, it took until like at least 75% to realize that this is a this is a monster romance. I'm smiling as if I actually um foray into that genre often, but it is a monster romance with a again a trans mask monster, and it is these two trans characters getting revenge on the town for how they are treated. I think I gave this four stars. Also, I bought this I think on Amazon because for a hardcover it went down to like under £10. So I thought, yeah, I need this. I just, I guess, didn't look at the page count until it turned up. So I was like, huh, makes sense now. Next book I finished reading was Our Last Echoes by K. Alice Marshall. And this is an author that I think I started dipping into her works last year, but I've really fallen in love with them this year. This is, it's her, T. Kingfisher. Who else am I obsessed with right now? I think those two are the like newer ones to my bookshelves, and I just want to consume everything they've ever written. 
and Kate Alice Marshall was a nightmare to get her physical works in this country because I found I found this one I found this one in Waterstones Piccadilly and I've just never seen a physical copy of her books anywhere in this country like they're not even available on the Waterstones website to order so I'm I'm trying to work out what to do here if I just got to go to the states and stock up how do I describe our last echoes so there's a T. Kingfisher book that I read called The Hollow Places, which I described as K. Alice Marshall's Rules of Vanishing meets Annihilation, the like 2018 film. And now I come to reading Our Last Echoes, which I would describe as T. Kingfisher's The Hollow Places meets Annihilation. <laughs> and I think the real reason I have such fondness for these authors is I picked... Well, I originally picked up T. Kingfisher for Nettle and Bone, which is a dark fantasy, and then I originally picked up Kate Alice Marshall for Rules Vanishing, which is like a YA horror influence. And the more I read about both of them, the more they come into this kind of like slight sci-fi influence contemporary horror. And that is a niche that I want to read everything about, I find. I think I gave this book 4.5 stars. Can I even begin to describe what it's about? No other than I keep comparing K. Alice Marshall and T. Kingfisher's works to each other over and over again. But I loved it, I can't wait, similar to how I now have a slight T. Kingfisher shrine going on. I would like a K. Alice Marshall shrine. My first audiobook reread of the month was Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, because to my memory it had a similar vibe to the book I'm currently writing, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to reread it just to refresh myself. So when I do, you know, the Paper Fury inspired flat lays of all the books that have similar vibes, maybe they'll be together. And this is a book, I think I gave it five stars when I first read it. It's, to my memory, again, one of the earliest reviews, or maybe the first review I did on this channel. So it has a lot of sentimental value to me. Then I reread it, and I just didn't like it as much as I did when I was 16 or 17. It's, I like it. It was my favourite John Green work for a while, and now looking back, I think, do I have to reread every single John Green work just to see if that's an accurate representation or if like young teenage me just felt so identified by this body of work and that I've just outgrown it in a sense. So a paperback I read this month that's been on my TBR and my physical TBR for a while is This Savage Song by V.E. Schwab which is a miracle it's taken me so long to read this as I am a big fan of all of her works and this one is I would say maybe in my top three. I'm sitting here and looking because she's on the shelf that's way over there because they're kind of arranged alphabetically behind me. And I am a big Darker Shade of Magic fan. I am a big Vicious fan. I am also the number one Gallant fan and maybe the only Gallant fan. But I think this one, I again gave it 4.5 stars. I fell in love with it. August is... Other fun lore about this book is that I think I got it around the time I started or I was in the depths of writing my book Paper Forests, which has a main character called August, and then I found out this book had an August, so I just put it off out of like spite of we can't share the same name. And then Paper Fury also released A Thousand Perfect Notes, which has a female main character called August. And I thought, wow, I'm being so quirky and original naming my character August, and then every book just suddenly had an August on my radar. Yeah, fell in love with this, read this. Okay, this one I feel like took me about a week, but I just didn't pick it up for certain days in between. Read this at the start of August, immediately picked up the second one when I was in Waterstones Piccadilly in mid-August. Is it going to take me another few years to read it? Maybe. So the other library book I read this month was The Hedgewitch of Foxhall by Anna Bright. And this is a book that, based off the description, maybe could have been, maybe I would have liked it, maybe it would have been mid-tier. I knew I wouldn't love it going in, but I didn't think I would dislike it as much as I did. I don't think I even gave like a sentence long review to this. I just, I didn't enjoy the characters. I didn't really understand the plot, the motivations. And I think it is just ultimately a book that is for someone other than me, but I got to about, I pushed my way to like 50% through and I thought, you know, I've got to commit to finishing it at this point. Maybe I shouldn't have finished it. My next physical book is All That Consumes Us by Erica Waters. This is the first book of hers that I've read, and now that I've read this, I am going to go and read every single thing she's ever read. This is a newer edition to my TBR. I think I picked it up March this year, so the fact that I'm reading it in the same year is very impressive. But it's because I thought I'm going to safely take this on holiday, because I know it's a very me book, and I will read it 
and I will enjoy it and I won't regret it taking up my suitcase space. But this one I love so much. I'm counting it as research because one of the books I want to write has like, you know, the dark academia vibe. This is very much a comp for that. By the time I get round to writing that book, this would be an out of date comp, but I loved it. This again, I think I gave 4.5 stars because as I keep saying, I loved it, but also I understood what it was trying to do the entire way through. Usually I read a lot of books where we get to like the 80% plot twist and it just comes out of nowhere. That's my slight issue with Erin A. Cray books is that last minute you had this wildly unbelievable plot twist. That feels like complete nonsense, but she's a wonderful at crafting stories and I'm along for the ride. This one, I wasn't like th thrown out of the immersion at all. <laughs> Which apparently gives it like an extra like half star rating for me. And then, okay, it looks like I read two or three books in the time that I was struggling through The Hedgewitch of Vauxhall. So the one I read next was Godkiller, which I think maybe I picked it up this year, maybe I picked it up like late last year. Been on my TBR for a while, knew I was going to love it, did love it. And I can't wait for the sequel to come out in paperback in this country because obviously I need a matching set. I remember when I started reading this book, I was not angry but frustrated that I was reading The Hedge Witch of Foxwood at the same time which has three POVs and it's three POVs but the characters are in like pretty much the same space the entire time so it didn't feel necessary to have everyone's perspective about the same situation whereas this one has four POVs at first only two of them are in the same place at the same time and then you get to a the bulk of the book where all four of them are in the same place at the same time but for this one I didn't feel fed up about having to read the same thing from four different perspectives because all the characters are unique have such a strong voice and I don't feel like they're repeating information and I really wanted everyone's perspective on the same situation. Next up we have My Throat and Open Grave which is the newest addition to my TBR because I picked it up let's say the 16th of August and then I read it on the 19th of August on my train home. So I think I did read this technically over two days. I read like an hour and a half on the train one day and I finished it off in another hour and a half the next day. And this is the book that I gave out of all my 4.5 star reviews. This is the one that I gave five stars on Goodreads because it made me feel something at the end. And that is the bar you have to hit for me to give five stars, is I have to, it have to feel it in my chest. This one, again, has been on my TBR for a while. I will be reading all of the author's backlist at this point, but the fact that it was so small and it doesn't feel like underwritten in any way, the plot feels like perfectly contained to a book that is 250 pages long. I am left wanting more, in a sense, but I don't feel like anything was missing from the actual storyline to get it to fit into a teeny tiny book. So I exported that video and uploaded it and then realised that it cut off like the final five minutes of the last two books I was talking about. And like I had so many issues with files for this video that I thought I'm just going to record a bit to stick on the end rather than recording the whole thing. So I apologise for my natural lighting, mic, bedroom setup rather than my lovely bookshelves. But there's two more books I want to talk about especially as one of them is in the title of this video. So the next book I remember reading was the audiobook of The Midnight Lie, which was a reread. I originally read this book maybe, maybe two years ago, because I somehow got an approved for the arc of the sequel, which I believe is called The Hollow Heart, and I thought, huh, I have this book. And I haven't read the first one. So I read the first one in The Fever Dream. I gave it five stars. I remember really loving it. But now that I'm looking back, it's like, did I actually enjoy it or was I speeding through to get to the second one because that means for the first time ever I read two books of a series back to back and I didn't enjoy the second one as much as the first so maybe I was just like you know blinded by something and my audiobook reread I didn't love the book as much as I did the first time so I gave it five stars originally I gave it four stars this time that's around four stars not like a 4.5 or 3.5 or anything and I think I, I'm still undecided if the book just doesn't translate as well to audio as I would like. So it's very internal monologue heavy and when there is dialogue there's very rarely like speech tags that go with it so it's hard to tell who's talking a lot of the time and the narrator doesn't differentiate the voices hugely. So I think I was just bored a lot but I really did love this book the first time so I think maybe it just doesn't translate as well as I hoped. 
I don't remember if I have a review for the Midnight Light on this channel, but I definitely have one for the Hollow Heart because I was committed to making videos for every single advanced copy I reviewed back in the day. Also, I'm currently using um, my beloved Kyle Wakefield's book, The Church of the Mountain of Flesh, as a tripod for this. It's an ideal height. I highly recommend this book just for its, you know, tripod properties. And the final book I hope, I hope I haven't I hope I have actually covered all these books so far. The final book I read is Night Strider, The Advanced Reader Copy by Sophia Slade. I have so many questions about this book because I'm not hugely up to date on the author's journey. I know she self-published, I think, six books. And based off the editions I see on Goodreads, it looks like Night Strider was meant to be self-published. And then it wasn't. And I, I need to know more about this publishing journey. But this is a book I picked up because... A vague interest in the publishing journey. I think I follow the author on social media and I was just interested in the book. When I started reading it I found it was very oddly reminiscent of the fancy books that made me fall in love with the genre and just reading in the first place. It felt very reminiscent of my youth. It's full of like morally grey characters, a side of actually questioning their morality and a glimpse into the great sibling dynamics which unfortunately only lasted for a chapter or two. I think in the end I gave Night Strider 3 stars, maybe 3.5, because I found myself longing to read more about the events that took place before the first chapter, and I felt like some of the exchanges between characters felt very two-dimensional and flat compared to the rest of the scene, almost like I was reading a script rather than a book. There's a lot of... not enough emotion for me specifically. Because based on the reviews, a lot of people love this book, and I can understand why a lot of people love this book, it's just a case of the writing style's not for me. And also I didn't personally find like a huge difference between, there's four perspectives, I didn't find a huge amount of difference between the personality. It is written in third person but I still want a little bit more distinction between voices. It is also definitely notable to mention that this is the first advanced reader copy, because this was an advanced reader copy from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review, where I've started reading it and I couldn't get into it that badly that I had to put it down for a week, step back and go back to the start and try again. And I did get into it the second time but I will admit there were still places where I was struggling and I was saying I wish I was reading something else right now. Which is unfortunate because I've seen, I've seen the reviews, a lot of people do love this book. I just unfortunately didn't so much but I did enjoy a lot of elements of it. So hopefully that is all 10 books I read in August. If not, I'm just going to accept this video as cursed and I will see you next week with an unboxing. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the comments below, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you intend to, if you enjoyed them. Tell me more about what you've been reading in August and I hope to see you next time.